All right, welcome back. In the previous video, we looked at ascending sort. Now in this video, we're gonna look at how we can make our own custom sort. So we could do a descending sort or we could sort by whatever criteria we can come up with. So to do this, we're gonna use the sort function inside of the sort package. Now to do a sort, you're gonna to need to do a couple different things. So we're gonna to need to know the length of our data set, how many different elements we have in there. Uh, say if we're comparing you know, two different elements at two different indexes, we need to know, hey, should I swap these two or should I not? Should I leave them alone or should I swap them? And of course, finally, we're gonna to need to swap them if that's true. So anyway, this, let's, let's take a closer look at this sort function. Okay, so we have our sort function here, and it's obviously gonna sort our data, but it's gonna take a particular data type. This is gonna take the type sort.interface. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we have our sort.interface data type, and it has underlying data type of interface. So this particular interface is gonna have three different methods. We're going to have a length, we're going to have a less, and we're going to have a swap. Like we said earlier, length is just going to tell us how many different, how many elements we have in our collection, so it knows how many things it's going to need to sort. And then less is just going to decide, hey, these two different elements at these indexes, should I go ahead and swap the two, or should I leave them alone? And finally, the swap is just going to change places of those two different elements if less was true. So here we have our variable nums, short for numbers, and it's of type my sort. So we went ahead and created our own data type, my sort, and it has these three different methods making it of type sort.interface. And as you can see, our data is is not ordered, so we're just going to go ahead and pass that in. So that's the data type that sort.sort .sort is expecting. There we go. It went ahead and sorted our data. So let's take a closer look at that. So length is pretty standard. It's just going to return how many elements are in our data set. And swap, like we said, it's just going to take something at two different places and it's going to put, it's just going to swap the two. This is going to execute if, you know, if less is true. If it says, hey, we should swap them, then it's going to run this method on those two different uh, indexes and it's just going to swap the places. Now, less, like I said, this is the, one, is the one that's deciding whether we should swap it or not. Now, we could change the logic inside here however we want. Just make sure our function signature is the same or else it won't be of our created type. It won't be of type sort.interface. So um, the function signature needs to be the same. We just, you know, we're gonna take two different indexes and we're gonna return a true or false, but how we decide if it's true or false, you know, that's up to us. So this one is obviously uh, ascent, ascending, as you can see, and we could change this to whatever we wanted. So I'm just going to change this to descending, and there we go, 9876543321. So whatever criteria you can come up with, you know, as long as you're returning a true or a false while comparing two different elements at different indexes, you know, you can just whatever you want to come up with. Now, let's say now let's say we make we make another variable here, nums two, and this one is just a slice event. This one's not of our data type, uh, my sort. So still, uh, you know, still not sorted yet, but we want to go ahead and make it of type my sort. So we can just use this right here, 
my sort, you know, parentheses with nums in, nums in it, and that should go ahead and change the data type for us. So just to kind of show what's going on there, it's just passing in a data type with those values, but it's not per, it can't change this original this original uh, variable. It's still of type slice of n. But anyway, down here we're just going to go ahead and print the type and the value of of nums. And then we're going to go ahead and print the type and value of you know my sort. All right, and as you can see, the type is slice of int for nums, and it's the same, it's the values as they're up there. Now, when we run uh, my sort on num, nums2, we get main.sort. So it just passes in a different data type. Um, the underlying values are still the same. And if we go back and we print nums2 nums again, you know, it's still of type, you know, slice of int. You know, and the values are still the same. It's just for temp. So what's going on here is we're just temporarily passing in those values. Actually, we need to uh, turn off one of those. So here we're passing in nums two, and then it's just you know taking. That variable and then just passing in a value of type my sort with those underlying values and so sort can just run on it Oops. all right there we go and it takes our data and it sorts it so just remember um, it may be a little bit extra work creating those methods, but it's going to give you more versatility in whatever you want to do. Whatever criteria you can come up with for sorting, uh, you just put that in your last function, and you know you could do that. Let's say if we we're sorting a slice, a uh, slice of string, well, you could you know you could sort everything by the length of the strings. You could from longest to shortest, shortest to longest. You know whatever you want to come up with, you can get real creative with it as long as you're returning you know, a bool to decide when you're supposed to swap and when not to swap. So I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.